First Samuel, the 17th chapter. Amen. And we'll start at verse number 20. First Samuel, chapter number 17, verse number 20. Amen. Amen. First Samuel 17 and 20, and when you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible gives us this intelligence, and David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, mm -hmm, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to to the same words and David heard them and all the men of Israel went and saw the man fled from him and was so afraid when they saw this giant this giant challenging them the Bible said they fled from him they ran because they were so afraid the men of Israel said, have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. David spake to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man that killeth this Philistine? Tell me. If I take on this challenge, what's coming to me? Take away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? People answered him after this manner saying, so shall it be done to the man that killed him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? What have I now done? What's so bad with what I, what I have done? Is there not a cause? Look at somebody and just ask them, neighbor, is there not a cause? Is there no reason why we should stand up and fight? Is there no reason why we should go forth and meet this challenge? Is there not a cause? Is there not justification? Is there not a reason to fight now? And you ask me, what am I doing here? Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I got a reason. I, uh, y'all ain't said it. Look at somebody and just tell them, I have a reason. There is a cause. There is something here that justifies me fighting. Now, I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters, but when God saved me and sanctified my heart to the truth, he did not do so to simply make me a passive child of God. As a matter of fact, I don't believe you can necessarily be passive and
and be a child of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible goes further and tells us that from the time of John the Baptist till right now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and it's the violent that will take it by force. In other words, what God has done now, God has set the kingdom before you, but it's not there to fall into the laps of passive people, but rather the kingdom is there for the taking. Look at somebody and just tell them, take it, take it, take it. Uh, look at somebody else and tell them, take it, take it. Hey Amen. The kingdom is there for the taking. So what we cannot afford to do now, my brothers and sisters, is to just sit by and allow the devil to run amok in our lives. The devil is a liar. What God needs now, God needs some people that are not afraid to stand up and meet this challenge. Uh, you know, I preached a few months ago, amen, the giants don't intimidate me anymore. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I'm not intimidated now. Amen. The devil is a liar. I am not intimidated by the challenge that has come up before me. And I'll tell you why I'm not intimidated. It's because I know that God is on my side. If I didn't know it, I took tail and run. I ain't gonna lie. Amen. But when I know that the greater than is on the inside of me, then why will I run knowing that the power belongs to me. Is there anybody sitting up in the house of God this morning that realizes what Jesus tells you? In the book of St. Luke's gospel, the 10th chapter and the 19th verse, he said, behold, I give unto you what? He said, I'll give you power and not the power to run, but I'll give you power that supersedes all the power of your enemy. And then he promises you that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you understand what God is trying to get us to see? He's trying to get us to understand that the devil does not have a power that is greater than the power of my God. So in this hour of challenge that we're living in, brothers and sisters, to run is not our lot. What God is looking for now with some people who stand up and declare I'm not running anymore. Oh God, y'all ain't saying nothing here. I wish I could just get about 23 of you that would tell the devil I ain't running no more. I ran last year, the year before that, and the year before that, but this year I'm not going to allow the giants to intimidate me. I'm sick of running. I'm sick of being scared. I'm tired of crying. Y'all ain't saying nothing here because some of us sitting up in here now, we have been victims so long until now we have what we call the victim's mentality. Every time a challenge comes up, we figure how are we going to get out of this? How in the world am I going to come back from this one? The devil is a liar. And you know what I'm going on now? I'm going on what God has already done in my life. And the devil is a liar. If after everything that God has already done I tuck tail and run now oh no touch somebody and tell them not me oh look at somebody else and tell them not me not with everything that God has already done for me and you mean to tell me now that a new challenge comes up I'm supposed to run like I ain't got no God on my side the devil is a liar you know what I'm celebrating now I'm celebrating the fact that I got a history of victory Look at somebody and tell them, they've ain't never been defeated. Huh? Huh, Y'all ain't saying, could I preach for a minute here? Slap your neighbor high five and tell them, I got a history of victory. You know what that means? That means God has never let me down. God ain't never let the devil whoop me. God has never turned me over to the will of my enemies. Huh? As a matter of fact, I hear him say it. Huh? He said, if God be for us, huh, then he's more than the whole world against us and I wish you'd look at your neighbor and tell them and guess what God is for us oh, y'all ain't saying that. could I preach up in here I come to tell you God is for us I don't care what the devil comes against us with we got the greater than on our side and we can't lose look at somebody 